Hi, everybody. It is your AP Biology teacher here, Mr. Poser. Today, we are starting topic 5.2, meiosis and genetic diversity. Our last one was on meiosis. What is it? What, is, what are the basics of it? How does it work? Well, it's a type of cell division that produces four haploid, non-identical gametes, all right, which means those are cells used in sexual reproduction. They are non-identical, which means they shuffle up the genes from one generation to the next. Um, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about how that happens. Um, so if you're a little like me, you might have been wondering the same kind of question that I put on the board or the, the screen here. Um, so when I was taking a, maybe I didn't pay enough attention in my freshman biology class because I didn't really get this uh, until I took like AP biology. And then I was like, Oh, yeah. So maybe you're wondering the same thing as me. If you've taken biology before, maybe you already know the answer. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Um, but this is something I wondered personally because I have an older brother. And I wondered once, I'm like, all right, if 50% uh, of my DNA came from our mom and 50% of my DNA came from our dad and his DNA also came 50% from mom and 50% from dad, then why aren't we like the same person, right? Don't we have half and half? Well, simply put here, you get different combinations of your mom's DNA and your dad's DNA um, with your uh, with your siblings, all right? And in fact, if you had even like a couple trillion siblings, like trillions of siblings, um, none of them would be exactly the same as you, unless, I, of course, you're an identical twin, uh, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Okay, so uh, sexual reproduction, meiosis, guarantee that the offspring from as a result of sexual reproduction are going to be genetically different from each other and genetically different from the parents, all right? That ensures that 100%. Um, like I've had students be like, oh, well, actually there's a chance. I'm like, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, there's really not. Okay. So some, some probabilities are so, so small that they're just basically zero. Right. So this is, uh, this is what I mean by this. All right. I'm going to elaborate on that in a little bit. All right. But, um, as I just said before, meiosis ensures genetically identical, non-identical gametes that contain one set of chromosomes and they are therefore haploid. They have one set of chromosomes when two gametes fuse. The resulting cell has a random assortment of maternal and paternal chromosomes. Okay, so uh, how you are a diploid organism, meaning that you have two sets of chromosomes in most of your body cells. Um, half of the set of chromosomes came from your biological mom. Half of those set of chromosomes, or one set of those chromosomes, came from your biological father. Um, and that's you know that's why you're different from them because you have like genetically different from them is because you have half and half of each, right? Um, and you're even going to be genetically different from your siblings that are also you know 50% mom and 50% dad because of these three uh, factors right here, independent assortment or random assortment, crossing over and random fertilization. And as I put here, these three processes guarantee genetic variation in sexually reproducing organisms. Okay, so uh, genetic variation is a really, really big idea that's going to come up a number of times um, in this class, especially in unit seven and unit eight. Um, so, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Genetic variation or genetic diversity, um, is a very, very important topic that'll be coming up here. Ready? Um, so the first reason why everybody's different from everybody else is due to independent assortment. Um, and I put a simple definition up here. The alignment and distribution of homologous chromosomes during meiosis is random. Okay. So essentially what I'm trying to say here, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, but essentially what I'm trying to say is that the chromosomes that you inherit from your mom are a random set of chromosomes from your mom and the chromosomes that you inherit set of chromosomes that you inherit from your dad is a random set of chromosomes remember all right humans have 46 chromosomes right you inherit 23 of them from your dad and you inherit 23 of them from your mom right so which 23 you get from your mom and which 23 you get from your dad is random Okay, and uh, so I'm going to illustrate that here for you. All right, so let's just say we have um, three homologous pairs here. In human beings, there's 23. All right, so I'm oversimplifying this. And I know that blue and pink is a little tacky, right? Like blue represents the dad or like men or boys, biological males, and pink represents biological females, girls, women. I, I, 
I know it's tacky, but just just bear with me. All right, I don't know. It's just what I picked. All right. Um. And anyway, this is a possible combination for these uh for these homologous pairs to line up during metaphase one. Okay. Um. It so just so happens that uh you know it, there's a possibility that the paternal chromosomes could line up on one side of the metaphase plate and the uh, maternal chromosomes could line up on the the opposite side. All right. Just like this. What's equally probable to happen is uh is that. Okay, this arrangement of chromosomes, it can happen, right? You see what I did there? Look, I just flip flopped these two, these these two big ones at the top that are the, that homologous pair. That's all I did. That's an equally probable arrangement of chromosomes, and that would result in a different distribution of those chromosomes between those four gametes all the way at the end of uh, telophase two. Okay. Um, so here's the deal about independent assortment. Homologous chromosomes are randomly aligned um, during meiosis one. All right. Um, just to prove the, my point here, I'm going to show you another combination right there. That is equally as probable as that. All right. And you see what I did there? I just switched them around again. All right. And you can check me on this, but here's all different eight combinations of those uh, pairs of chromosomes that you can get. Um, so three homologous pairs means eight possible chromosome arrangements. And you can check my work. If you want to pause the video and you want to check my work to see if I uh, repeated anything over there, you can. I got it. You know, I didn't mess it up. All right. Um, but Essentially, what I'm showing you here is that since the um, uh, homologous pairs, the uh, with the where the excuse me, the way they lined up is random, so long as the homologous pairs are across from each other, um, that can give you two to the whatever number of homologous pairs power um, number of combinations. So if I have three sets of homologous pairs, or I have, yeah, three homologous pairs, um, that'll give me eight different combinations of chromosomes for the gametes to inherit. All right, there's eight different ways that those gametes are going to inherit chromosomes um, if there's three homologous pairs. Now, do you remember how many homologous pairs human beings have in real life? 23. All right, so that means there are two to the 23 different combinations of chromosomes that uh, your mom can pass down to you. And there's also two to the 23 possible combinations of chromosomes that your dad can pass down to you, which means... The number of combinations of chromosomes that's possible in a human zygote is 2 to the 23rd times 2 to the 23rd. All right, which means that is, uh, I'd, I'm going to have to double check this and somebody maybe can check my math here, but that is over 70 trillion different combinations of chromosomes that one zygote, which is the fusion of sperm and egg, can inherit. So, uh, yeah, nobody nobody's going to inherit the same number of chromosomes or the same combination of chromosomes. It's it's impossible. All right. Like some numbers are so small. It's not, it's not like Jim Carrey saying, Oh, you're saying there's a chance. Like, no, no, there's not. There's not. Okay. Uh, this ensures that everybody's going to get a different combination of chromosomes. All right. Um, another thing that's going to mix up the genetic pool and the genetic variation even more. Um, I'm going to just about to talk about that here, but, uh, these are the images that I use to show, uh, what would this be? Prophase one, metaphase one and telophase one. Um, in the last video, I just copied and pasted the pictures over here. Um, do you notice anything interesting what's with what's happening with the chromosomes between prophase one and anaphase one here? Um, we'll take a look. They're all kind of like a solid colors over here and they're using the blue and red color combination as well, I guess. Um, and then uh, look at look at what happens to them by the end of this over here by telophase one. Oh, look, there's some of them are like a mix of red and blue and some of them are like flip flopping. Very interesting. That's what's called crossing over. And it's actually a really big deal. Um, and we're it's going to come up a couple more times in this unit. Okay, crossing over is the exchange of genes between homologous chromosomes during synapsis, um, prophase, and that happens during prophase one, and it results in recombination. All right, so here's my blue and purple, let's just say paternal and maternal chromosomes once again. Um, they're coming together during prophase one, during synapsis, all right? And then what happens is that, um, well, so, you know, in biology, a lot of things have pretty complicated names that are have, you know, Latin or Greek root words or whatever. Um, sometimes things are just like appropriately named in a way that makes a whole lot of sense so crossing over occurs all right and what do they do well they cross over why don't we call it crossing over great idea um so uh <laughs> what happens during crossing over is that these chromosomes these homologous chromosomes kind of touch each other and then they like swap their genetic material all right a piece of that chromosome switches places with a piece of the on the other chromosome and what you end up with are called recombinants uh, uh, those are chromosomes with new combinations of genes Okay, so you can already get 70 trillion plus different combinations of 
chromosomes from your parents. Now, when those chromosomes are getting flip-flopped and switched around, imagine how many different combinations of genes that you can get, all right, when, once the chromosomes start to, start to swap their genes. All right, there's like 20,000 different human genes, right? So like the number of possible combinations of genes by themselves is just it's ridiculous, right? It's mind boggling. All right. So as I put down here, great, greatly increases genetic variation by increasing combinations of genes gametes, gametes inherit. Um, so yeah, there you go. Independent assortment and crossing over are pretty much guaranteeing um, that uh, that genetic variation is going to happen. All right. Um, this is kind of showing us independent assortment again, right? If we have two, uh, two homologous pairs, right, there are four different combinations of chromosomes, four different combinations of genes that uh, you can inherit without crossing over, right? So that's showing independent assortment. Um, when I searched up crossing over, this picture came up and then I put it in the, in the slides um, and it's not a picture of crossing over. So I tripped up on that, but it's there anyway. Um, all right. So then the last piece is random fertilization. This one's the easiest to explain here is that, uh, you know, um, which sperm and which egg become the two that will fertilize and become, you know, the offspring for the next generation is random, right? There's no greater chance of one sperm cell uh, fusing with the egg, or there's no one greater chance of one egg um, than another. So that makes it completely random, all right? And uh, there you go. That increases um, the variations as well, all right? Um, there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no bias, there's no favoritism, whatever. It's completely random, right? Um, so yeah, there you go. Everybody's different from each other. And that's the reason why. Now, last thing I want to leave you with here um, is that, okay, we have already talked about a few times how meiosis produces four non-identical gametes, right? So they're going to be future sperm cells or future egg cells um, that are going to fuse with another gamete and then become a new, uh, new offspring with a new combination of genes. All right. Um, and meiosis produces haploid cells, which means they only have one set of chromosomes. One set of chromosomes plus one set of chromosomes, pink, two new sets of chromosomes, right? Um, but uh, it's not always necessarily true that meiosis produces haploid cells. Sometimes there's mistakes, all right? Sometimes there's errors in uh, in cell division, all right? Um, so I circled what happens over here. All right, this is, our, this is what normally happens during meiosis, and I circled what happens over here um, under some special circumstances. And something that you might have noticed here is that these chromosomes in meiosis two are not quite separating, right? So the homologous pair is separated properly, but the sister chromatids are not separating properly. So what you're ending up with down here, look, over here we have uh, one set of chromosomes, one set of chromosomes, one set of chromosomes, one set of chromosomes. These are all haploid cells. We have two cells over here with one set of chromosomes, but we have one with like one and a half set of chromosomes. And then we have another one over here with one half set of chromosomes. All right, these two cells are not haploid because these uh, sister chromatids did not separate properly. What that is called is a non-disjunction. So I put incorrect, separa incorrect separation of homologous chromosomes or sister chromatids is called non-disjunction. They do not separate properly um, during meiosis and it results in an uneven or un incorrect uh, number of chromosomes that the gametes inherit. And therefore they are not haploid, right? These two cells are not haploid. They don't have a set of chromosomes. They have less than a set of chromosomes or they have more than a set of chromosomes. Uh, so we can't say they're uh, haploid. Um, this is an example of what's called aneuploidy or an incorrect number of chromosomes. Um, we're going to talk about this later on, how uh, actually non-disjunctions like this that happen in particular uh, populations of organisms can result in new species um, being formed. That will be something we probably will cover um, in, uh, I want to say, units, the end of unit seven. Um, and then something else that might be notable here is that in human beings, certain aneuploidies result in uh, some genetic disorders, um, like say Down syndrome, for example. Down syndrome is very well studied. Um, it's a result of what's called trisomy 21. I, do I have my little pen over here? I'm going to still use that. Trisomy, trisomy 21. Okay, so trisomy 21, tri means three, so was referring to chromosomes. So uh, somebody who has Down syndrome inherited one more chromosome because of a non-disjunction, number 21, um, from either their mom or their dad, their biological mom or biological dad. 
Um, so there you have it. That's the that's the root cause of Down syndrome. It's very, very well studied and very well understood. Um, so yeah, that is it for this video. Um, so there's the new for the the new content here. I'm just gonna recap really fast. Meiosis results in four haploid gametes with a unique combination of genetic material from both biological parents. Unique combinations of chromosomes and genes result from these three things: independent assortment. There, uh, there's a random arrangement or distribution of chromosomes between gametes, right? So long as those homologous pairs are lined up from each other, there's a you know two to the whatever uh, number of possible combinations of chromosomes that gametes can inherit. Um, crossing over, the exchange of genes between homologous chromosomes ups the combinations of genes that offspring can inherit. Um, and that just makes sure that nobody's ever going to be the same. And then random fertilization is the fact that, you know, no sperm or egg has a better chance of fertilizing than another. Um, so there you go. Um, that's where genetic variation comes from. All right. And then that last bit that we talked about is that meiosis almost always produces all haploid cells under, except when uh, non-disjunction occurs. And that results from an incomplete separation of chromosomes during meiosis. And that results in incorrect chromosome numbers or what's called aneuploidy in gametes. And therefore they're not technically haploid if they have more than a set of chromosomes or less than a set of chromosomes. All right, that is it for this video. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and we're gonna get into some real like probability genetics type stuff in the next uh, couple topics. So see you next time.